Minix released the best budget fanless mini PC earlier this year, and now they're back with a new iteration featuring a beefier CPU. Goodbye quad core, hello, octa core. But a new CPU doesn't automatically mean a win, and there are definitely some important things you should know about. We'll go over them in great detail right after this message. Don't you just hate it when you empty the recycle bin, only to realize you deleted some files you still needed? Well then, EZUS Data Recovery Wizard comes to the rescue. It's a simple to use yet powerful data recovery app, and you can try it for free with a link in the video description. Silent computing is awesome, and I encourage everyone to experience it. I awarded Minix the best budget fanless mini PC with the Z100, but can the Z300 take the crown? If you're wondering what the difference is apart from the CPU, well, there isn't one. It's still the same premium metal case that acts as a heatsink and looks pretty nice too. Since the case is the cooler, it gets warm and even hot over time depending on your usage. While even at its hottest it didn't burn me from touching it, the Mini does get hot enough that I pulled away in a couple of seconds. When it's not working hard, it'll start to cool down again. The Z100 we reviewed previously had Intel's budget N100 4-core CPU, but the Z300 features the i3 N300, an 8-core A3 chip with more powerful UHD integrated graphics. This Mini is $320 US for the 512GB SSD 16GB DDR4 RAM combo, which is $50 more than the Z100. Yep, fanless minis come at a premium compared to their fan-cooled brothers. Inside the box is everything found previously, including the external wireless antennas, screws, HDMI and power supply with multiple region plugs. The Z300 0DB has a reset button on the front. Inside is an Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX201 for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The left side has a micro SD card slot, USB-C 10 gigabit data port only, dual USB 3 10 gigabit, audio jack and power button. The right side has a barrel jack connector which supports 12 to 19 volts, dual USB 2, Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN and dual HDMI for up to 4K 60Hz. So a total of two displays. Nothing here has changed from the Z100. Opening it is real easy. Remove the four screws, lift the lid and we're in. Okay, so there's a single DDR4-3200 stick since the older Lake N chips only support single channel memory. There's an NVMe drive with a heatsink on it, an M.2 Wi-Fi card and the CMOS battery. As nearly with every mini PC so far, the Minix Z300 0DB comes with Windows 11 Pro and it's malware free. Ubuntu worked fine from the USB drive when I tested it. So let's see how the 8 core fanless does in the benchmarks. Will it be a banger or will it be fanless? What, you think this is easy? In single core Cinebench, the N300 performs just like an Intel N100. And if you count less than 1% of win, then yes, the Minix Z100 had a win. The newer Z300 beats all the N100 minis in the multi-core test. Not by a massive margin, but 23% against the Z100 with a similar power draw is pretty nice. Geekbench gives the win to the Minix Z300 for single core with a default result. And as expected in this lineup, it takes the win in multi-core. Another multi-core CPU test we look at is H.264 video encoding. The Minix Z300 is one of the fastest in this mini rounder, even when comparing the minis with the power limit increased. Integrated graphics sees a big jump. The i3 N300 performs just like the N97 in DX11. That's a 41% increase over the N100 in the previous mini. There's an even bigger jump in DX12, this time 56%. And in the limited data set for Steel Nomad Lite, the Z300 takes first place. So no upgrade for single core, up to 20% improvement in multi-core, and over 45% with the iGPU. Alright, I want to see how the benchmarks translate to games, and Valorant is a CPU heavy esports game which likes high single core performance. So there wasn't an upgrade over the Z100. And you can see the 1% lows makes for a gaming experience that isn't smooth. League of Legends runs on almost everything, and now it holds above 60 FPS thanks to the iGPU boost.
GTA 5 still runs under 30 FPS at 1080p, but it's a big improvement over Intel's Zen 100. Hades 2 is now also much more playable. The sequel to one of my favourite games in recent years just came out and runs much too slow unless you lower the resolution scale. Here it is at 50%. Looks rough. Emulation wise there's still not enough of a performance improvement to go up to 1080p from 720p for PS2, GameCube and Wii. Those wanting a silent mini PC for recording and editing audio can use the Minix. Latency mod with Cinebench running in the background passes just fine. This mini can also be used as a simple 1080p video editing workstation. Alright, so 3 Mark storage benchmark has the Gen 3 X4 NVMe drive performing much better than the M.2 SATA. No surprise there, and we need more data for a better comparison. The OS drive can get pretty warm, but it didn't thermal throttle during the thrash test. I had problems with Bluetooth on this mini and was unable to complete the Bluetooth audio speaker test. It connects the speaker and then disconnects shortly after. I tried two drivers, two devices and Linux as well. Same result. This could be just an issue with my unit, but with a sample size of just one, it's hard to tell. Which is a shame because Wi-Fi range is excellent. The best so far thanks to the external antennas. Apart from being full speed with low latency, I played a game of Valorant and the Z300 had no problems at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. Mashing the delete key on startup will bring you to the BIOS. You'll find all the additional settings that might be of use in advanced power settings. The Z300 0dB has an idle power draw of 10 watts and that's up over the Z100's 8 watts. Impressively, all the extra performance only comes at the cost of an extra 2 watts compared to the Z100. That extra 2 watts does cause the max temp to reach a new high of 98C. But high CPU temps with fanless minis is not uncommon and CPUs can withstand higher. Obviously a lower maximum temp from a bigger heatsink would have been nice. The standout feature that I've been harping on about is that the Z300 is fanless, so it's dead silent. The only noise you'll hear is whatever ambient noise surrounds you. Once you experience it, it's hard to go back to a fan base mini. Even though it has to cool the CPU with a case, this mini is smaller than other actively fan cooled minis out there. Alright then, conclusion time. This mini is fanless. That's uncommon and always welcome. The Minix Z300 0dB is also the first 8 core silent mini we've looked at. Many of these passively cooled units suffer from reduced CPU performance, but this one performs well out of the box and doesn't throttle. External antennas mean there's excellent Wi-Fi range, but I had Bluetooth issues with my unit. Apart from the CPU upgrade, no additional improvements have been made with the Z300. Power delivery and display via the USB-C port would have been nice as an example. CPU temp will be high if you're constantly putting the mini under full load without giving it a break to cool down passively. There's no additional storage option apart from the micro SD card. Overall the 50 US dollars gets you quite a bit of extra multi-core CPU performance and a lot on the integrated graphics. Whether that's worth it will depend on your needs. Minix hasn't made any changes to the box so it's more of the same good stuff, just more powerful. While this is their fanless option, Minix also has a very quiet actively cooled N100 Mini called the Neo Z100 Aero. It's also a great performer and you can check out the review for it right here. Cheers!